One, um, I want to thank Dan Gillison for joining us and sharing the NAMI Nationals vision and next steps, as well as Elise Ferguson for being our keynote speaker this year. I also want to take the time to thank Greg Hanch and our NAMI Texas staff, board, and amazing volunteers for without you, the conference would not be possible. Without further ado, this year's meeting will start. Ms. Secretary, do we have a quorum? Yes. Um couple of things. With over uh, 225 people voting in this year's NAMI Texas election from more than 20% of the affiliates, a uh, quorum for the 2021 NAMI Texas election is established. Now, to help us determine the quorum for the annual business meeting, if you would please fill out the poll for this session in the attendee website. Um, and you'll see that come up. And yeah, if you, Linda, I, I'm still working on getting that uh, okay. poll to, to uh, be activated. So uh, folks, we'll let you know when that poll is available. Okay, perfect. Then we will wait. So, so while we're, while we're doing you. that, thank you, Linda. While we're doing that, um, real quick, can we just step back one slide? I want to make sure we thank our sponsors for helping us with this year's conference. And I didn't want to... I didn't want to go uh, go back. There we go. There you go. So I want to thank Humana because they have been a, a great resource and a champion sponsor for us and 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 helping the Forward to Wellness Conference go smoothly. Um, I also want to thank Neurocrine Biosciences as they've also really helped us kind of take and support this conference donations. And I know that if you, you know, go through, um, they're, they're talking about, the uh, I will mess this up, TD, uh, because I can't really get that word out correctly. But I want to thank them because they've gone through and made sure that we've had our sponsors for this year. This year's conference um, has been amazing. And I, I just think it has a lot to do with, with their partnership. So I wanted to thank them for that. And then the next slide, there you go. And Linda has gone ahead and read all that and talked to you guys about the quorum. Greg, are you? Actually, you know, I would, if, Andrew, if I could just jump in on uh, quorum for a minute. I see how many participants we have in the meeting here. I was wondering if folks were a NAMI member um, as of September 12th of this year, uh, please enter your name and your affiliate into the Zoom chat. And that'll, that'll help us get a feel for how many NAMI members uh, are in the room. It looks like we are, and I'm gonna go ahead and enter mine because I'm a NAMI member. It looks like we are going to fall short of quorum for this annual business meeting, uh, but we do have quorum for the election. And the good news is regarding quorum for the annual business meeting, we're not taking action on any items. We're not taking any votes. So quorum is not an essential element. Very good, thank you, Greg. So with that, um, do you wanna move on to the next slide, Amy? We'd like to congratulate Diane Banks on being elected the Texas Peer Representative for, to the National Peer Leadership Council. Diane Banks serves as the NAMI Texas PLC State Representative since 2016. And the work that she has done with NAMI National Peer Leadership Council has granted her the opportunity to further her experience and training in working with peers that have lived experience with a mental health condition. Diane says the work that has been done with NAMI Texas PLC has been a template for many states to pattern after to start a state PLC organization. I know that peers' voices are a very important part of the advocating and recovery for those with a mental health condition. A huge part of my goal is to be able to represent the work with peers and spread hope for those living with a mental health condition. We are thankful and honored to have Diane as our NAMI Texas Peer Leadership Council State Representative. So thank you and congratulations, Diane. Would you like to move to the next slide, please? By more than two third majority vote of NAMI Texas members bylaws article um, 5, 17, section one, the 2021 proposed revision to the NAMI Texas bylaws are approved. Outstanding job. And I appreciate the vote from the membership. 
Next slide, please. With that, I'll go ahead and hand off to Commissioner Stout. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is David Stout. I'm speaking to you from the far west Texas town of El Paso. I'm happy to, to be the uh, treasurer, the current treasurer on, on the NAMI Texas board and happy to be able to provide you all this treasurer's report. So uh, as y'all can see, our overall gross profit for 2021 year to date. And so this year to date is actually up to, to September. That's um, the latest financials that we have available to us at this point. And so these numbers are, are we still have um, three months remaining to, to hit 100%. I just wanted to remind folks of that. So we're the gross profit is at about is $553,678 or 87% of the total projected revenue. Um, that includes cor uh, corporate contributions that are that have come in at 8,220 and are at 69% of what is projected. The individual contributions are we're doing really well, uh, 93,527 or 133% of what we uh, had budgeted for this year and grant revenue is at $372,000 or at about 78% of what we projected. And just as a reminder, again, we still have three months uh, left to, to hit 100% on all of those. Um, when it comes to expenditures for 2021, we are under budget, which is good at 127768 by $127,768. Um, and that includes our business and operating expenses that is coming in at 40464 or 68% of what was projected. Our payroll is at 85% of what we had projected at $235,532. Our program expenses are at 69% of what was projected at $87,591. And our annual conference uh, expenses are at 23% uh, or $6,073. Um, that is of course, because we, we are doing this virtually. Um, so overall, our, our NAMI Texas net revenue for 20, uh, year, 2021 uh, year to date, we're, we're healthy. And our net revenue is at 178,000, which is about 41,000 or at 130% uh, of what was projected. Uh, for the revenue for this year. And so um, we're doing well. I want to thank uh, Greg and his team for all that they've been doing. And of course, uh, my, my colleagues on the, on the board, what a great board to, to be able to work with and looking forward to, to what's, what's to come and, and a great conference so far. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank you, David. Appreciate that. And um, I will also mention, um, I'm not sure we covered it, but we do have another um, drive going on right now with a $10,000 match. So you'll see different um, information going out to our membership for donations. Um, it's a great way to make your donation double to help NAMI Texas. So thank you very much for that, David. And without further ado, I'll pass it to Greg, our executive director. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, it is great to see you all here. Uh, it has been a while since we've been together at a NAMI Texas conference, hasn't it? Was anyone at the conference in 2019? If you if you would, uh, if you were at that conference, raise your hand with the with an emoji. I see Angela. Yep, uh, Melissa. A lot of people were there 2019. Um, thank you for coming back for those of you uh, who were at the last conference or were at a previous conference. Um, and if this is your first NAMI Texas conference um, and or if you're a new member of, of NAMI you've joined recently, uh, welcome. We're uh, thrilled that you're part of the NAMI family, thrilled to have you in the, the NAMI membership. Um, we're a growing family and uh, I think we get bigger and better every day and I'm really honored that you've chosen to be part of, of NAMI in Texas. If you're not a NAMI member, um, I encourage you to join. Um, it's a really great experience to be part of this organization. Um, and we accomplish a lot together. It's a team effort. Uh, we can't do it uh, alone. We, we're, we are in this together. We have a small staff, a very committed staff. We rely heavily on volunteers to be part 
of leading programs, um, advocacy efforts, and, and other um, important volunteer work. Um, let me uh, just get my screen queued up. So um, I just want to, you know, start by saying NAMI Texas has been as busy as ever this year. Um, we are at the forefront of programming, advocacy, affiliate development, and more. Um, we have an incredible staff who work tire tirelessly in their roles. Um, there's Patty Haynes, our program director, who hosts trainings, oversees support groups and classes, and supports the affiliates in the programming that they offer. Uh, there's Grace Mansfield, our outreach coordinator, who provides technical assistance, training, guidance, and support to the local NAMI affiliates across Texas and to groups that are working on becoming affiliates. There's Matthew Lovett, our peer policy fellow, who is the point person these days on NAMI Texas's public policy advocacy initiatives. And there's Becca Ortiz, uh, our new operations manager, who provides administrative support, answers helpline calls, assists with fundraising and communications, and much more. Uh, we're glad to have Becca on the team. Uh, she jo joined just a few weeks ago. Our previous operations manager, Melissa Holden, uh, took a new job, uh, but I want to recognize her and thank her because she played a big role in making uh, this conference happen and supporting NAMI Texas uh, as a staff member over the last couple of years. Uh, we also have an incredible board of directors. These amazing people volunteer their time and their talents to move NAMI Texas forward. They exemplify a working board uh, who all contribute to NAMI Texas in a variety of ways. Um, we do not have a board uh, that uh, sits back and lets the staff do all the work. Um, we, we do not have a board that only focuses on one thing. They're involved in all areas of, of NAMI Texas um, in, in different ways. They all bring unique strengths um, to the table and uh, they contribute a lot of time um, and a lot of resources and we appreciate all that they do. Um, and then there are our members and our volunteers. Uh, NAMI Texas has more than 1,700 members across the state. Um, many of them participate in NAMI programs and many of them lead NAMI programs. I'll get into talking about those programs um, and, and the impact that they're having. Uh, but but the, you know, it's important to understand that these programs would not happen if it were not for volunteers. Uh, the volunteers are very committed people. Um, they're very generous with their time. Um, and I think they recognize the value of um, helping others. And, and I think that that's such a, a special part about our, our membership base and our volunteer base is that they're very supportive of, of other people who have been through similar experiences. So if you're a, a member or you're a volunteer, uh, thank you for, for all that you do. I, I'm, I'm going to put a clap emoji in here uh, for you. If I could get some other applause for the the members and volunteers of NAMI Texas using your emojis, that would be amazing. Jim, thank you for the thumbs up um, as well. Uh, so, uh, so far this year, I just wanna give some highlights. Um, I want, uh, regarding our programs, NAMI Connection and NAMI Family Support Group have served more than 500 people across Texas. Um, many of these people attend the support groups regularly on an ongoing basis, meaning that there have been thousands of encounters, over 5,000 encounters with NAMI support groups in Texas this year. And a sliver of those are those support groups that are offered directly by NAMI Texas online, uh, but most of them are offered by the affiliates. Um, so the affiliates should really be proud of, of all the people that they serve uh, through their programming. Um, as far as NAMI education programs go, that continues to be a key focus. Over 400 people in Texas have taken NAMI family to family this year, and 25 of them have become NAMI peer to peer teachers, which will expand the availability of peer mental health education. Uh, Patty Haynes, uh, our program director, also takes the lead for NAMI Texas in numerous other programs, including NAMI Basics, uh, NAMI Homefront, Ending the Silence, 
Sharing Hope for Black Communities, Comparti Indo Esperanza for Latinx Communities, and more. Uh, these programs are a true partnership between uh, NAMI Texas and the affiliates. NAMI Texas offers, offers numerous program leader trainings at no cost to the affiliate, and the affiliates use that training to offer the programs in the communities that they serve. Um, on that topic of partnership with the affiliates, um, affiliate support and development continues to be a key focus for all of our staff. And it is our outreach coordinator, Grace Mansfield, who spearheads much of our work in this area. We have 25 affiliates right now, but it won't be long before new affiliates are added with approval from NAMI Texas and NAMI National. There are active groups in places like San Angelo and Athens and Brownwood and Palestine who are well on their way to affiliation status. Grace helps the affiliates with whatever their needs may be, whether it's outreach, development, volunteer recruitment, and much more. And if it's programming the affiliate needs help with, Patty steps in, and if it's advocacy, Matthew is there for them. Uh, the 2021 NAMI Texas Affiliate Development Symposium is a prime example of the support that we provide to affiliates. We offered four webinars to affiliates on different topics that we believe are important for them in building up and expanding the capacity of their affiliate. Um, Grace also provides staff support to the NAMI Texas Peer Leadership Council. Do we have any Peer Leadership Council members uh, here? If you would raise your hand with your emojis. Uh, I see a few here. Yes, thank you for all that you do as a member of the NAMI, uh, NAMI Texas Peer Leadership Council. You all are an amazing group of people appointed by affiliates to elevate the peer voice within NAMI across Texas. They had a workshop today, and I encourage you to go back and watch it if you missed it earlier. By the way, I mentioned our peer policy fellow, Matthew, a moment ago, um, and I'd like to circle back to advocacy at this time. Advocacy continues to be a core focus and strength of NAMI Texas. Uh, as some of you know, my first seven years with NAMI Texas was spent working pretty much exclusively on advocacy. So this area is near and dear to my heart. Uh, this year was a pretty wild ride for advocacy in Texas as there were four separate legislative session, uh, legislative sessions. And you guessed that NAMI Texas was involved in all of them. We had a wonderful mental health capital day rally in the spring and a series of virtual engagement opportunities with legislative offices. Did any, anyone participate? Uh, in the NAMI Texas Days of Action this spring. I see a few of you definitely who did. Uh, Jane's out there. Jane was definitely meeting with elected officials uh, through the Days of Action. Certainly Doug Beach, Brenda LaVar, uh, Angela Horner. Yes, thank you all for being part of our advocacy efforts. As I mentioned that programming is a partnership between NAMI Texas and the affiliates. Um, advocacy is as well. Um, you know, I think the affiliates have a unique opportunity to move the ball forward on advocacy, as does NAMI Texas, but our strengths and our capacities are different, um, and we, they really complement each other. So that's another area where partnership with the affiliates is, is really key, and I think we're um, stepping our game up with that. For example, uh, we have a revamped NAMI Texas State Advocacy Network, where the affiliates are point, appointing representatives, um, and there's a back and forth, uh, and there are multi-directional communication channels um, where NAMI Texas is sharing advocacy information to the affiliates, and the affiliates are bringing advocacy information um, back to us, um, and those things really uh, work in tandem with each other. Uh, so. We also have, in, in the realm of advocacy, we've been doing NAMI Smarts uh, very actively uh, in a virtual format for the most part over the last couple of years. Um, we have trained dozens of advocates how to act for mental health. And just a few weekends ago, we had our uh, first NAMI Smarts teacher training in a few years. Uh, and that, there will definitely be more of that in the days to come. NAMI Smarts is... Um, uh, it, it is a wonderful program for engaging your NAMI membership um, in, in the important work of advocacy that we do, education, support, and advocacy. Um, th that's our bread and butter. Um, so I, I want to 
focus on just a few key legislative accomplishments. We are pleased that the legislature made numerous critical decisions to strengthen access to mental health services and supports. For example, the legislature invested tens of millions of dollars of new money into the state hospital system. The legislature established a Medicaid benefit for the collaborative care model, providing mental health services in the primary care system. Uh, the legislature improved access to broadband and telehealth services, and they started preparing for the rollout of 988, which was something that NAMI Texas played a leadership role in getting passed into law in the uh, springtime legislative session. Um, and the legislature established new ways to promote equity and in insurance coverage. NAMI Texas has been the most prominent leader on the topic of mental health parity um, in comparison to any other mental health organization in the state. Um, we've led the charge on mental health parity. Um, and in September of this year, the state agency, state health agency's mental health parity work group published a strategic plan specific to mental health parity. I chaired that work group. And as far as I know, Texas is the only state with a statewide plan for, for mental health parity and is the only state with a specific recognition for mental health parity um, in the entire country. October is now Mental Health Parity Awareness Month, thanks to the advocacy efforts of NAMI Texas and our partners. Um, our policy team provided testimony for 17 bills registered in support or opposition for roughly 160 more bills. Uh, we visited countless offices. Um, of the 26 bills that we championed, 10 were signed by Governor Abbott but many reforms were left on the table. I don't wanna paint an overly rosy picture. I think we've had better legislative sessions before than we have this year. We did get some important reforms put into law, but a lot was left on the table. I won't get into the specifics, but you all know as well as I do that there are gaps in the system that need to be addressed. So we have to keep pushing on advocacy. We have a track record of success, but much work is ahead of us and Matthew is doing an incredible job leading our advocacy work. Um, one other key area for NAMI Texas that I'd like to touch on briefly is awareness of the NAMI brand. There is a lot of power in what we have to offer, but not enough people know about it. We have a whole section in our NAMI Texas strategic plan dedicated to addressing this. We now have a contract with a communications firm who helps us develop our social media content. And this investment is paying off. We have over 4,200 followers on Facebook, which is much larger than other, most other Texas-based mental health organizations. Just over the last 30 days, our Facebook followers are up 3.5% and our Instagram followers are up 3%. Some individual posts that we're making on these platforms are reaching thousands of people. We had a post uh, that we simply shared about Dak Prescott, the Dallas Cowboys quarterback, uh, last month, I believe, that reached over a thousand people. That makes an impact. When people see us, see our name out there, see the information and the messaging that we're putting out there, that translates to more awareness of the NAMI brand. The same is true when people see us quoted in statewide media outlets. And you can, you can do a Google News search for NAMI Texas, and you will see that we are, on a fairly regular basis, getting covered in, in prominent media outlets. We have more work to do when raising awareness of the NAMI brand. We've made strides in that area. We're, we're getting more media mentions than before. We have more social media followers and reach than before. Uh, but there is more investment, there's more staffing infrastructure resources that would be helpful and beneficial in that area. Um, when we have more awareness, there's uh, the NAMI brand, there's more engagement in programs, there's higher membership numbers, there's more donations, et cetera. Um, and you may want, you know, why does it matter like to you as a NAMI member or, or to if you're an affiliate leader, why does this matter? Well, our intention with these marketing efforts is bringing more people to NAMI Texas, but it's also bringing more people to local NAMI affiliates. And when more people come to us and to the affiliates, we have more of an impact. Before we hit the next slide, which is a slide that I'm particularly excited about, uh, 
I do want to ask you to check out the session profile for this business meeting in the attendee website. If you scroll to the bottom, you'll see the NAMI Texas 2020 annual report. Um, this is hot off the press. Um, you're really the first to see it uh, beyond our board of directors. It'll be on our website soon. Uh, but you'll see that um, attached in the session profile and please take a look and see what we accomplished last year, which uh, was, of course, a very challenging year. That we got a lot done during um, with that, I'm going to end my remarks. I do want to just give a special shout out to our board members um, who are, are leaving the board. Um, I have a few people in mind. I want to thank Yvonne Broach, who's been a great mentor. Um, she was president when I started in this position, and she's, she's just been amazing in, in supporting NAMI Texas and me over the years. Uh, Linda Cantu, same goes for you. you you've been incredible um, chairing development, uh, chairing communications. Um, just real, you know, I, you've had a transformational impact on NAMI Texas serving in many roles. And I want to, yeah, I see some applause for Linda. Um, she well deserved. Same goes for Yvonne. Um, and then we have another Linda fr from the board. I would like to thank Linda Denke, um, who's been on the board for a long time, and her, her term is winding down. Um, and she's been a, a, just a wonderful person to work with as well. So thank you. I'm sorry if I missed any board members uh, who are leaving. You're, if I did, you're amazing too. Um, I didn't. That that was a little bit off the cuff. There were a few people who I see in the meeting here who I had in mind who needed to get that special recognition. Um, without any further ado, uh, you know, big news, big announcement. Let's go to the next slide. Hey, uh, the NAMI Texas 2022 annual conference and award celebration. We're announcing it a full year in advance. Well, 51 weeks in advance. Uh, Frisco, Texas, the Hyatt Regency Frisco, this hotel uh, opened last year, mid-pandemic uh, or early pandemic. Uh, it's beautiful. It's a very modern, sleek facility. It's the perfect space for us. Uh, it has everything we need. Um, and I think when you set foot in, in the hotel lobby your first time, it's, it's going to knock your socks off. It's really a, a, a beautiful facility in a vibrant area of North Texas. Um, do I just want to ask, it, raise your hand if you are a Frisco, Texas resident and you feel comfortable sharing that. Do we have any Frisco folks in the annual meeting? Maybe not. I know we have some folks who are nearby. How about uh, any folks who are Collin County, Denton County? Anyone in that part of the state? Yes, love to see it. Well, I'm excited to see all Texans at next year's conference. This is gonna be a very special gathering for a number of reasons, but first and foremost in my mind is that it'll be our first in-person conference in three years. I look forward to seeing you all there. With that, I'm going to end my remarks uh, because we have another round of workshops in just a little over 10 minutes. Thank you so much for all that you do to support yourself, your family, your community in the state of Texas. NAMI Texas appreciates you all very much. Thank you, Greg. Thank you very much. With that, do we have any questions or comments? Um, I know that Diane has been monitoring the chat and ready to moderate and or ask questions of the board and or Greg. There haven't been no postings of questions yet. Very good. All right, well, um, with that, I want to say thank you to Greg and the team again. Uh, great job on the conference. As Greg mentioned, we do have some um, heavy hitter board members that are leaving us. And I, too, want to make sure I give the same praise. Um, these board members have been outstanding. Um, Yvonne was one of my mentors, as well as Linda uh, Cantu, uh, Linda Danke uh, as well. Um, has been involved and also Kino will be leaving us this year as well. And I wanted to make sure I thank Kino. Um, he did a Sorry, great Kino. job. Thank, thank you. Thanks for all you do. Yes, sir. He did a great job. And he also helped work with um, his region to find uh, 
a suitable replacement, which brings me to the board members. Those of you that are on the um, in the different uh, affiliates and regions, board membership is crucial to keeping NAMI Texas and all NAMI affiliates uh, moving forward. So if that is your calling and you feel like you have a voice and you want to be involved um, and you have some skill sets you would like to share, um, being a board member is not easy. Um, it's very consuming, and but it's very rewarding. So I want to make sure I reach out to say if you know somebody that would be a great board member and an affiliate, reach out to those affiliate leaders. If you know a great uh, candidate that would be a good board member for the NAMI Texas, please make sure you reach out to myself or Greg Hanch. Um, Amy is our um, nominations chair, and so we're more than happy to reach out to these individuals and and see what they're willing to do to help us out. 